If you've been diagnosed with IBS, then you're like most people. You've probably gone from doctor to doctor to doctor. You've probably tried many different kinds of medications, over-the-counter, prescribed antibiotics, and probably haven't had much success. And so you continue to suffer with these things like abdominal cramps, abdominal bloating, diarrhea, gas, absorption problems. And if this sounds like you, you most likely have something called SIBO, okay, or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And this could be a big part or an integral part of your IBS symptoms. Now, if this is the case, you're not going to want to miss out on this six-part video series that I put together for you, okay? I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and throughout this video series, I want to explain to you really what SIBO is and how it relates to IBS. I want to talk to you about how we identify it in our office, because you really have to have specialized testing uh, performed in order to identify it. So I'll, I'll talk to you about how that can be done. Um, third, we're going to talk about how to actually prevent SIBO, because for many people, it often returns if many of the core issues that surround that bacterial overgrowth aren't addressed. And finally, I'm going to talk to you about what you can do to get it under control, because again, in most cases, if, if you don't take a, an approach to it that addresses these, these, these multiple aspects, you're not going to be able to correct it. And, and I do want you to realize that this is something that can be corrected naturally, but again, you have to start looking above and beyond and outside of just the GI tract and just trying to kill the bacterial overgrowth with antibiotics, okay? Now, to understand SIBO, you, want, you need to understand that the entire gastrointestinal tract, including the small intestines, it contains bacteria. It's supposed to contain bacteria. The, the difference here is that unlike the large intestines where there's just lots of bacteria, your small intestines really has much fewer kinds of bacteria, and the kinds of bacteria that are populating your small intestines, again, here are very, very different, okay? Now, due to medications, due to a leaky gut, due to poor diet, due to hormonal imbalances, due to toxins, due to a loss of the neurological control of these cleansing waves, the number of bacteria that are predominating in the small intestines begin to overgrow. And again, they begin to resemble the kinds of bacteria now that you would find in the large intestines and in the colon. Now, linking bacterial overgrowth um, with irritable bowel syndrome makes 100% sense because if you look at the symptoms that someone who has SIBO has and you look at the symptoms that someone who has IBS, you're going to see that they're virtually identical. You're going to see diarrhea. You're going to see constipation. You're going to see bloating. And specifically, you're going to see these things after meals. Now, here's what happens. When you ingest food, you, the bacteria throughout your, your GI tract uh, are going to ferment or break down these foods. And as it begins to break down these foods, gas is going to be released into the small intestines. And that's going to cause some painful bloating. It may cause constipation. It may cause diarrhea. Now, people with SIBO will often complain again about these symptoms specifically after meals. So if you're noticing that, if you're noticing that uh, you know, you're having constipation and cramping and bloating and just feeling like, a, you, like you swallowed a football, well, that could potentially be SIBO. And that would be you know, a red flag um, that these symptoms are related to SIBO. So the question here is now, what causes this small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, right? Well, in a simple word, really anything that stops or slows down this muscular wave-like contraction of the stomach and the intestines, okay? These things, are, again, are going to be things like your hormones. These are going to be neurotransmitters. These are going to be infections. These are going to be things like a leaky gut. These are going to be food sensitivities. This is going to be anything that causes inflammation throughout the GI tract. Even some of the medications, for example, that you're taking because maybe you've been diagnosed with uh, ulcerative colitis or you've been diagnosed with Crohn's or you've been diagnosed with celiac disease or you've been diagnosed with IBS, those very medications you're taking to try to feel better and to fix your problem are not really fixing your problem. They could be making your problem worse. I want you to think of it like this. Think of your GI tract as being one continuous tube that's really just lined with muscles, right? And it's the nerve system that's going to coordinate and causes those muscles to contract. And as those muscles contract, that contraction is going to propel food as well as bacteria from the stomach into the small intestines and finally into your colon. So anything that interferes with that muscular activity, okay, can be a potential cause. Now, what's very important to realize is that this muscular activity is essential, okay? It sweeps the small intestines. It's like a broom that basically just keeps kind of pushing the bacteria and, and pushing the food along its pathway, okay? So again, it sweeps the bacteria out. So takeaway point number one is this. Anything that keeps the bacteria sitting in the small intestines for a long enough period of time 
or anything that interferes with the cleansing waves, that's going to allow the bacteria to spread backwards from the colon back into the intestines. Okay, so that's, that's very important to realize. So how do we test for SIBO? Well, I'll tell you, in our office, one of the things that I believe is, is, is just hands down the best way to test for it is through what's called a hydrogen breath test. In fact, recent studies show that really over 78% of patients with irritable bowel syndrome actually tested positive for a hydrogen breath test. So there you have it. This could be a potential cause to your IBS symptoms. And if what I just described sounds like you, go back to my website, visit my website, watch a video that I put together that explains my 10-step IBS recovery program. It's so important that you watch this. Now, in the next video, I'm also going to explain to you the why behind SIBO, and I'll go into explain more about that breath test in terms of what a positive or significant finding is, and, and really, again, get into some of those other things that I just believe are so important to address if you have IBS, okay? Well, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. I hope you enjoyed this video. Should you have any questions, feel free to contact us through our website. Um, so you can see that you'll see really at the end of this video, okay? We'll have a, a link uh, at the end of this video where you can just click on that. That'll take you to our website and um, watch that video because I promise you that video is just so, so very, very important in terms of identifying many of these, these causes behind uh, irritable bowel syndrome, okay? Well, take care.